Hey everyone, so today we have a very, very special episode. For those who are familiar with Led Zeppelin and Jimmy Page, then chances are you're already aware of this famous unit. But for those who are not, basically I'll be briefly talking about this specific unit, showing you guys what's also on the inside of this, and finally giving you a quick demonstration. Okay, so to start off, I want to read a quote from the Met, the metmuseum.org which has a, an article on this specific sonic wave. And they start off by giving kind of a history of the theremin. So what they have here is, quote, the theremin invented in the 1920s by Russian engineer Lev Theremin, or Leon Theremin, was the first successful electronic instrument. Its pitch and volume are controlled by the proximity of the player's hands to vertical and horizontal antenna, respectively. This version, and they have a, a version that they had on exhibition in 2019. So as, as they quote, say, owned by Jimmy Page, features a single antenna for pitch control. So Page used a theremin, often used with his Echoplex EP3 tape delay to create the dynamic soundscapes in Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love and No Quarter. He also incorporated the instrument in live solos and in his soundtrack to the 1982 action film Death Wish 2. So there you have it. So basically, the pitch here was controlled with this single antenna here. And what you, you would do is clamp it in here, and then you would extend the antenna out. So I've gone ahead and measured the antenna. And so right now it's about 26.5 centimeters. And when we stretch it out, we get up to around 87 centimeters. Okay, so before opening it up and then giving you guys a demonstration on the unit, I just want to kind of show you the outside. So we have one knob here for adjusting. And through the demonstration, uh, you guys will get a better idea of what that specifically means. But to just quickly summarize, you can adjust the sound as per the, for example, the humidity, the, uh, the weather conditions. So depending on the day, for example, you would have to ad adjust accordingly. So let's look at the back here. So we have a switch here for on and off and two screws there, some rubber feet here on the bottom. So then here we have the clamps to where we can put the antenna on. And then finally here is where we have the output. So we can, for example, have this going into, let's see, in Jimmy Page's case, the Echoplex EP3, and then, or any other effects that we would want to use. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and disassembled the back panel just by taking out the two screws. And let's go ahead and see what's inside. So here we have a sponge. And this is to protect protect the 9 volt battery, which goes here in this little pocket. So next we have a switch here. And it, it might be a little difficult to read, but it says Stackpole UND Lab INC. So that's for the on and off. So over here, in total, we have five capacitors. So you can see this larger ceramic capacitor here, and that says Z5U, uh, 0.01P, and then 1000 volt. So then we also have three smaller ceramic capacitors, and on those, so for example, here, here, and here, and those say, 0 0.001 plus 100, and then a 20% tolerance. Then we also have a wax capacitor here. So this says good all type 621S. So it's 0 0.047 microfarad, 400 volts. And it says 446 on the bottom. So then we have here two trim pots and on those it's a little difficult to read so I've gone ahead and written it out but at the top it says patent 
And then it says, actually it says RCL patent, number 542942. And then afterwards it says et al. And that's for both. And also here you can see on the sides that it has, for example, 119T-4-10. And then underneath that we have 395-3. And then I went ahead and saved the best for last. So we have two germanium transistors here. And it looks like it's a little difficult to read, but... So it says Delco, D-E-L-C-O at the top. And then next, or the next line, we have DS26. And then underneath that, it may be a little difficult here, I'll try my best. We have VFAZ274. Then at the end, three okay so that's delco ds space 26 vfa z 2743k so it looks like it has a red dot on there at the bottom you can see there on that one and there as well so it looks like both of them are actually the same model number and yeah, actually, I forgot to mention, but we have a diode right here as well. Uh, any other information? Actually, here the battery snap says Japan on it. So I just noticed that. And yeah, maybe I can show you guys here, for example, if we turn, so we have the adjust knob here. So if I'm to turn that, I'll just show you guys what that looks like. So I'm turning it right now, and you can see there uh, the result of that. So I originally thought it was a potentiometer, and, and maybe this is. I'm not familiar with this at all. So if any of you guys know what it is, more specifically, and that'd be great if you could just comment, just to try to get as much information on this unit as possible out there. And let's see, is there any other information I'm missing? Uh, I guess, yeah, I could say that I learned that the owner, the previous owner, never changed the trim pots, or never turned them, I should say. So they've just been in the same position, and they received theirs again, or they purchased it 20 years ago. So it's kind of interesting. And then, yeah, so that's about it. So I, I really hope this helps any of you guys who are wondering what it looks like on the inside and yeah there you go okay so i'd like to end this demonstration showing the internal components by noting that for example here we can see that the circuit is not attached anywhere onto the inside it's actually so there are four holes uh, here 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 and here where the circuit is just kind of placed in there. So you can actually move it up and down quite easily. So it's not really secured. And so there's a YouTuber Zim's Guitars and they have a really nice video showing a sonic wave that they found. And for their video, you can see that actually, so I didn't show the bottom in this video because it looks like when they demonstrated their video that the circuit is actually just upside down. So I found that quite interesting and yeah, check out their video if you guys want to see what the bottom of this circuit looks like. So next I'll show you guys a demonstration. Okay guys, so I have the unit hooked up now to this old Tesco amp here. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and turn it on. And the adjust knob is all the way to the right at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that until we hear no noise. Okay. So let's go ahead and test this out. OK, 
Okay, so let me try to cut my hand, see if it. Okay, so I can't be too loud, but yeah, this is very interesting. Let me see if I adjust a little bit more. Does that change anything? Okay, so looks like I would have to have or be a little bit closer for that setting. So about right here is where yeah, we have a little more wiggle room to work with. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the demonstration here at this point. Okay guys, so that about wraps up this video and I really hope this helps towards preserving the history of this unit. So now that you know, we have some information here on what's on the inside, what, what types of parts were used and whatnot. I'm really hoping that this can help some of you guys out there that are wondering, what the heck is this thing? What's going on? So um, I'll be posting any links to information that I have on this unit in the description. So please check that from time to time. If I find anything new, I'll be posting it in the description. So one thing I'll be posting too is uh, an actual link showing the inventor himself properly using this unit. So obviously I, yeah, I don't know how to use this yet properly. So the demonstration I showed you guys is kind of just, you know, to, to give you a rough idea. So yeah, if this is the kind of content you enjoy watching, then please like or subscribe. And, you know, as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in.